Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Spurs Up Show, the best Gamecocks podcast on the internet. Today is Monday, May the 11th, 2020. On today's show, we begin our 2020 opponent preview series. Today, we're talking the Coastal Carolina Chanticleers. Yes, Coastal South Carolina's week one opponent. I'll break down Coastal's head coach, how they did a season ago, their best returning players on offense and defense, give the overall outlook for Coastal Carolina this upcoming season, and much, much more. Also, some news and notes to get into your listener questions, a pack episode of the Spurs Up show and a very, very exciting episode in the sense that the daily podcast is back, football content is back, some normalcy returns to the podcast, and we appreciate you guys tuning in as always. As always, though, the Spurs Up show is brought to you by our friends over at SeatGeek. SeatGeek, the best ticket buying app by far, the only ticket buying app I use, the only ticket buying app that I recommend. Guys, sports is returning. Sports is coming back slowly but surely, and when you need your tickets, you want to get them through SeatGeek. Again, the best ticket buying app that is out there. Go download the SeatGeek app. Go to SeatGeek.com. Use the promo code SPURSUP. You're going to get $20 off your first purchase. Guys, like I said, I know it's not totally back. It's not totally normal, but sports is slowly coming back for sure. We've got UFC going on. It's sounding like baseball might return. Obviously, the NBA is trying to get back, but football this fall, football tickets are out. You can go buy them right now. If you're going to buy your tickets earlier, whatever you're doing, as far as your ticket buying is concerned, once things return, you need to use our friends over at SeatGeek. they got a great selection, great ticket rating system, which also rates the tickets for you based on the type of deal you're getting. So, guys, Never again are you going to have to scalp or you're going to have to worry about, oh, am I getting ripped off? Am I overpaying for my tickets? They make sure you're getting the absolute best bang for your buck. They put the consumer first. They make ticket buying super simple, super easy. They've really changed the game in regards to ticket buying. So, again, that's our friends over at SeatGeek. Go download the SeatGeek app or to SeatGeek.com. Use the promo code SPURSUP, S-P-U-R-S-U-P, to save $20 off your first purchase. Let's get it. What's up, guys? Happy Monday. Welcome to the Spurs Up Show. I'm Chris Phillips, your host, as always. If you could not just tell from my ridiculous shouting, I am fired up. I am freaking fired up today on a Monday. I hope everyone had a fantastic weekend. I appreciate you all tuning in. Life is starting to return to some normalcy, and I, for one, am freaking fired up about it. We've got UFC fights over the weekend. We've got businesses opening across the state of South Carolina. I might actually be able to go get a haircut sometime in the next week or two, and I haven't had one in like two months. I'm starting to get some, some big league flow over here. It's absolutely absurd. The beard's starting to get long as hell. But life's starting to come back. And I, for one, I, for one, am fired up about it, guys. Let's go through these housekeeping items really quickly because I want to tell you guys about everything that's going on because obviously you're hearing this show. The Daily Podcasts are back. We're talking football today. Football content is back. But I'm going to break down exactly what the deal is going to be for you guys so you know. Um, Again, housekeeping items, of course, as always, if you haven't done so, click the pause button right now. Do me a huge favor. Go rate the show. Go leave it five stars. Leave your feedback, your thoughts, whether you're on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, whatever you're on. Click the pause button. It takes 30 seconds. Go leave a five-star review. And again, if you have any thoughts on the show, things you like, things you don't like, if you've got suggestions, if you have questions, that's a great place to do it. But if you have not done so, and all those that have left reviews, thank you. Thank you so much. But it helps boost up the podcast when you go leave five stars for many people that have never heard of the Spurs Up show. It helps them to find it. So go leave five stars on the podcast. I really appreciate it. Also, if you're listening and you're not subscribed, genuinely don't know what you're doing, hammer that subscribe button. Again, the daily pods are back. You're going to get those daily notifications when the podcast drops. So be sure you don't want to miss out on that. Hit that subscribe button. Smash that subscribe button if you have not done so. I'm telling you, you need to do it. Also, one thing I want to bring up as well, another housekeeping item, guys, a lot of people ask, you know, how can we help support the Spurs Up show during the, the quarantine, the pandemic, whatever, all the stuff that's still going on? Obviously, the Spurs Up show, what I've built, it is a small business, right? So small businesses are taking a little bit of a hit. And I'm a person that I want to tell you guys, and you guys obviously know this, but my business model from the very beginning has been that I do not put my content behind a paywall. And that will never change. That's just something that I've always, you know, I wanted to be different than the other guys. There's obviously a ton of sites out there that put their stuff behind a paywall. I'm a content creator. That's what I love to do. I don't want my content to be hard 
for people to view, right? I want everyone to be able to consume it and enjoy it. Um, but again, as you guys obviously know, with the pandemic going on and everything else, um, it's definitely put a strain on small businesses. Now, this is just something, and this is just me giving the option to people that if you want to support the show, if you want to help me out, help out the show, you absolutely 110% do not have to do it. But, you know, I'm someone that likes to lend, you know, uh, support small businesses or lend a helping hand whenever I can. If you're someone like that, if you want to support the show, we do have a Patreon page. Um, there's three different tiers on the Patreon page. You can either give $2 a month, $5 a month, or $7 a month. Again, I'm not a person that puts any content behind a paywall. So I can't promise you there's going to be any like exclusive special content there or anything. If you're someone that does donate though, I would love to know because I would love to give you a special shout out. I mean, I'll definitely shout you out on the podcast or do whatever. Um, heck, I'll send a handwritten note. I'll send you a sticker. I've done stuff like that before for people for not making a donation. But um, I just want to let you guys know that if you if that's something you want to do, again, we are on Patreon. If you go to Patreon and you search the Spurs Up show, it is there. Um, I created a Patreon page, I think, last year, just because a lot of small businesses, a lot of creators have them. But, again, I'm just someone that I don't want to put my content behind a paywall. That's just simply not how I operate. That's not my business model. That's not what I want my business model to be. But again, if you're someone that you're a big fan of the show, you support, if you want to support that way, I would obviously certainly very, very much appreciate it. Um, but I just want to let you guys know that option is there. Again, you can give a dollar a month. Yeah, I don't really even care. But if it's something you want to do, the kindness of your heart, I would appreciate it. And again, if you don't, it's completely fine. The content's going to continue to flow to you. And if you do, again, my heart goes out to you. I really do appreciate it. And let me know, by the way, that you donated because I definitely want to shout those people out and do something special for those people. So again, like I said, just want to give you guys that heads up. Last housekeeping item and very big, and I've already said it, daily podcasts are back. Um, obviously the podcast went into a hiatus last week. I was trying to kind of, kind of trying to figure some things out. What exactly are we going to do? I said, you know what? Screw it. Because off season content for football, really, it started this month. Um, and it was going to start later this month. That's that, you know, following the same plan that I did last year. But I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm ready to get back to some normalcy, get the daily podcast. going. I'm talking everything that we were doing before quarantine, everything I was doing before quarantine where, you know, all the, all the clips on social media and just the, the daily pods and the guests, it's all returning. So I think this is going to be the plan right now, guys. Uh, Monday, Thursday, or excuse me, Monday, Wednesday, Friday is going to be normal shows with content, with news, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And obviously right now we're doing the 2020 opponent preview. So Monday, Wednesday, we're going to focus on that. That's literally going to take up the next six weeks. Um, obviously if there's any other news commitments, you know, news in general, we're going to include that in the podcast, but we're starting, we're diving into the football content with the 2020 opponent previews, breaking down every single team, the Gamecocks face this year and really giving fans just kind of an inside look, a deep dive into the opponents that South Carolina faces. So you guys can know a little bit more, um, about those teams. And it's something fun that I, I enjoy doing as far as diving into football. But again, Monday, Wednesday, we're going to do like the normal content shows. Tuesday, Thursday are going to be exclusively interviews. Um, so I'll go ahead and spoil it for you guys this week. On Tuesday, we've got Justin Rowe, who just beat cancer, which is awesome. Definitely wanted to get him on the show and talk about that. And then Thursday, we're going to have Jose Mata, who is on the 2010 national title team for South Carolina baseball. So again, Tuesday, Thursdays are going to be interviews, like one-on-one -on -one with people. Um, I mean, obviously, all this is subject to change as far as do I want to put the interviews back on the Monday, Thursday show, whatever. But either way, the daily podcasts are back. Football content is back. I know we're all starving for sports right now. We're starving for football, especially. There's so much uncertainty. Will there be a season, this and that? I'm staying optimistic, guys, and I'm previewing the season as is. Like, we're going to play a full 12-game season. We're going to be in the stadium. I'm just simply one. I'm not doom and gloom. I can't stand to be someone who's down in the dumps about it. So, we proceed and we press on. And like I said, I'm very, very excited. Let's go ahead and jump into it. I'm very excited. The 2020 opponent preview series begins today, right at this moment. We are talking Coastal Carolina. The Coastal Carolina Chanticleers come to town. Gamecocks taking on Coastal Saturday, September the 5th at williams Bryce Stadium in Columbia, South Carolina. 
It will probably be a scorcher. I imagine this will probably be a noon kickoff. We all love those noon kickoffs in late August and early September in Columbia, South Carolina, buddy. It'll probably be 110 degrees in the stadium. But, again, Gamecocks taking on Coastal to open up their 2020 season. You take a look at the all-time series record. Gamecocks lead the series 2-0. and These teams have only played twice, which seems crazy to me. The only two meetings coming in 2013 and 2018, the last meeting – South Carolina beat Coastal 49-15 to in 2018. I was actually at that game, and I remember that one was an absolute scorcher as well. Um, big game for the offense that day. You know, I remember going into that season. That was Brian McClendon's first year as the OC, full-time OC. Offense looked really good. Jake Bentley had a big game. I think Keel Pollard had his first career touchdown in that one. Rico Dowdle had a rushing touchdown. Debo had a big game. He had the one-handed catch in that game. But either way, Carolina took care of business, beat Coastal 49-15 to in 2018. Now, I know you guys remember 2013 when South Carolina absolutely blasted Coastal Carolina. I think the score was 70-10. to um, South Carolina took care of business. And that's back when Coastal was, was really, really good. A guy that I went to high school with, Matt Hazel, played wide receiver at Coastal. He actually played in the NFL. I mean, they, they had a really, really good team. Um, the 2019 record, when you look back for Coastal, and we're going to dive a little bit more into this. I'm going to go over their schedule. But in 2019, Coastal Carolina, 5-7 and seven overall, 2-6 and six in the Sun Belt. Their head coach is Jamie Chadwell. Jamie Chadwell going into his third season. He's 8-16 and 16 overall as their head coach. Um, you know, you take a look at his accolades. I mean, a guy that, you know, Big South Coach of the Year in 2013, 15, and 16. Um, he coached at Charleston Southern. Yeah, Charleston Southern. So, you know, it, this is interesting because Coastal, like, like I said, Coastal used to be a program that, you know, a really, really solid program, really good football program. Like I said, when Carolina beat Coastal 70-10, to 10, I mean, that was a damn good program, no questions asked. Um, you know, you take a look again. Jamie Chadwell was the offensive play caller in 2019. Coastal Carolina offense recorded over 400 yards of total offense five times, season high 636 yards in the road win at UMass. They were pretty, pretty good on offense last year, and Jamie Chadwell is certainly an offensive guy. In 2018, he was the Broyles Award nominee, which is an award given to college football's top assistant coaches. So a guy that definitely knows what he's doing on the offensive side of things. Um, he was the interim head coach in 2017 due to Joe Moglia taking a medical sabbatical, and I think that really set the Coastal Carolina uh, program back a little bit. They've also had some off-the-field issues with some NCAA stuff. So. It's been kind of interesting to see, I guess, the fall from grace, if you will. But Jamie Chadwell, again, an offensive guy. He's trying to get those guys back again. We talked about how did they fare in 2019. You take a look at 2019 for the Coastal Carolina Chanticleers. A very interesting year. Again, 5-7 and seven overall, 2-6 and six in conference. Their season started off, though, with a 30-23 to 23 loss at home to Eastern Michigan. And I know that one's extremely disappointing. What's crazy is they went on the road the next week and beat Kansas at Kansas 12-7. to Talk about a, uh, a, an interesting game there. They went on to win their next two ball games against Norfolk State, Norfolk State and at UMass. Uh, lost to App State in a tough one, 56-37 to from the looks of these scores. Their defense was not very good. Um, lost against Georgia State, 31-21. Lost at Georgia Southern in three overtimes. Um, gave Georgia Southern really all they won in that one. Won against Troy and was only a win away from – or excuse me, two wins away from going to a bowl game. They proceeded to lose three of their next four. Uh, got blown out by Louisiana. Lost 28-27 to at Arkansas State. Uh, lost 45-42 at La Monroe. And then came home for their final game and beat Texas State 24-21 to on senior day. So – a really interesting season, you know, a season Coastal Carolina really close to making a bowl game. And I think obviously going into this season, that's certainly what the goal is for this Chanticleers program to get back to a bowl game. You take a look offensively, defensively, we're going to look at the best returning players for Coastal. We'll start on the offensive side of things. Their best returning player on offense, this one, guys, is pretty easy. And it's running back C.J. Marble, the senior running back, the senior speedster. You know, C.J. Marble, a guy that – I'm pretty sure I remember him playing in the 2018 game, um, but he had a phenomenal year. He's one of the – a sleeper running back to watch out for in the 2021 NFL draft. I mean, a guy that 
again, you take a look at the stats, played in all 12 games, started all 12 games, rushed for over 1,000 yards, 5.3 yards per carry, 11 touchdowns. He also had three receiving touchdowns, I believe. Uh, yeah, 38 catches with three touchdowns. Really quick duty and catch out of the backfield. He's used as a return man as well. He is their playmaker. He is their guy. Um, you know, he he's their go-to dude. So, South Carolina obviously going to have to keep an eye on him stop the running game. Their best defensive player going to the defensive side of the ball on the line of scrimmage, defensive end Taron Jackson. He's a senior, 6'2", 270, pass rusher. He had a really good year for those guys. 50, uh, excuse me, uh, 60 tackles, 10 sacks, 13 tackles for loss. He's going to be a guy that's going to be a disruptor, going to be in the backfield. South Carolina definitely going to have to account for him on the defensive side of the football. Um, again, those numbers are really, really, really good. 60, ta- 60 tackles, 10 sacks for Taron Jackson. And, again, he's a senior. So, Coastal definitely with some senior talent. Um, you know, taking a look at the overall outlook for Coastal Carolina, kind of what their season looks like. And we've got their 2020 football schedule pulled up here. I mean, again, this is going to be a team that is fighting to get back to a bowl game again. I think they're going to be right there at that five and seven, six and six, maybe seven and five mark. You take a look at their schedule, though. They have obviously Carolina the first week. Then they go to Eastern Michigan, Duquesne at home, Kansas at home, which will be the first ever Power Five opponent to play at Brooks Stadium in Conway, South Carolina, which is a really, really cool thing. Um, Arkansas State at home at Louisiana, Georgia Southern at home at Georgia State. South Alabama at home at Troy versus App State and then at Texas State. So, again, it's going to be an interesting year for Coastal Carolina. Again, a once very proud program, a once very, very good program that I think is obviously – I think we'll get back to that. Um, Again, Coastal has tradition. Coastal's one of those teams like an App State, like a Georgia Southern, that just has tradition. You know, you're used to them being good. They'll be able to recruit. They have a beautiful facility in Conway. I've never seen it in person, but I've seen pictures. They obviously have, like, the teal field or whatever. I would love to go. I, w- I wish I- – I mean, it would never happen, but I would love to see, like, South Carolina go there because I would love to see Coastal's campus and see their football stadium. But overall, you know, that game, uh, you know, I-, I think that Coastal's probably a 6-6 six and six team. I think they probably do get back to a bowl game if I had to predict. But looking at it from the South Carolina perspective, this is a game for Carolina where – they need a big W. South kind of needs to come out of the gates hot this year. The, the worst thing that could happen is you play Coastal and it's like a 14-7 to 7 game at halftime and fans are upset. And there's already going to be a lot of tension and a lot of uncertainty. And, you know, fans, the fan morale is going to be very weird coming into this season. You know, you need to come out of the gates flying, especially offensively, and get a big W. I'm going to hold off and give them my predictions because I'm going to do that, obviously, as we continue to go throughout the offseason. I make my predictions for the season, stuff like that. But I think the overall outlook for this Coastal team, really this Coastal program, they're a team that is improving. Um, they really need to improve on the defensive side. I think that was the biggest thing for them where they were really, really hurting last year. But at 5-7 and seven and 2-6 and six in the conference a year ago, I expect them to improve a little bit. We'll see how much they improve defensively. Probably six and six, seven and five is right about where you can see this coastal team be. So again, the third overall meeting between the two schools. I'm glad they're playing personally. I think this is a series that needs to continue. But South Carolina Coastal, that is the Coastal Carolina Chanticleer, Saturday, September 5th in Williams Bryce Stadium. We will be in the building and very, very much look forward to seeing Coastal come back into Willie B once again. Um, all right, let's jump to these news and notes really quickly, and then we'll get your listener questions. I talked about it early in the show, but really the thing that should be leading off this podcast, Justin Rowe, former Gamecocks baseball player Justin Rowe, has beaten cancer. He has beaten cancer. Such an awesome thing. We'll have more on the pod tomorrow as Justin Rowe is actually going to join the podcast for an interview. And we're going to talk about his baseball career and all that stuff because I'm I'm definitely curious and interested and intrigued to get his takes on the teams he was on and you know, how his career panned out, but definitely going to be a very, very big point of emphasis and really a celebration that Justin Rowe is cancer-free. Awesome to hear. Um, Another thing I mentioned earlier, South Carolina to resume on-campus classes this fall. Big news for us that are, you know, again, staying optimistic that football is going to return and be played on time and, you know, everything's going to at least somewhat get back to normal. You know, that is the big first step is getting students back on campus. 
I think it's a good decision. Again, things can change, obviously, as more information comes out and as this pandemic, this thing continues to evolve. But I think it's a great decision. I think it's great to see we're getting closer and closer, closer back to some sort of normalcy, if you will. So I'm really, really excited to see that again. Gamecock, South Carolina, getting back to on-campus classes in the fall. I think it's like August, <clears throat> excuse me, like August 25th is I think when they'll come back. So really, really good stuff. Finally, J.J. Jones, the wide receiver from Myrtle Bit Beach, my bad, from Myrtle Beach, has set his commitment date. August the 5th is when he will commit. South Carolina in his top five right now. You guys have heard me talk about him. This is an absolute must get for South Carolina. Absolute must get. It's a guy you have to have. One of the best players in the state. You absolutely have to keep him home. Um, I know Tennessee's in the mix, which what they've done on the recruiting trail has been absolutely insane. But Tennessee's in the mix. I think Mississippi State's in the mix. North Carolina's in the mix. So, you know, it's definitely not a given. Um, I think right now, according to 247, he is – favored to go to South Carolina, which doesn't shock me at all being an in-state guy. But uh, this is one you got to have. You, you got to get him. You got to get him. So August 5th is when we will know J.J. Jones' college decision. Should be very, very interesting. All right, let's get in these listener questions really quickly. Ben Smitty, 2017. Any reason to believe in Muschamp? The only – here's the thing. Because the only thing that's going to make this season success, Mike Bobo is really going to have to be that guy. Mike Bobo is really going to have to be that guy. And some defensive guys are really going to have to pan out. But I was talking to a buddy about this the other day. And here, here's my thing with Muschamp. What gives people the confidence that, listen, like I equate it to this. If you're dating someone for eight years and they've been the way they are for eight years, why would you have any optimism that year nine, they're all of a sudden going to be something they're not? Like, Will Muschamp has done this. He's, he's been a head coach for a while now, and he's been the same guy every year. What gives you as a fan confidence that all of a sudden, Will Muschamp is going to go against every trend that he is known for and turn into this great game day coach who has an explosive creative offense and <clears throat> you know what what gives you that confidence because I don't have it I just don't understand what so that's why for me it's hard to believe in him you know what I'm saying like that's why because it's like what makes you think he's going to change why would he like you know what what makes you believe he's going to change there's nothing for me that says he's going to at all so We'll see. I mean, like I said, I don't want to be right. I want to see South going to go seven and five, eight and four this fall. I would love nothing more. That's where it's so funny. People get it so twisted. They think I want to see us lose. It's like it's the complete opposite. <laughs> it's the complete opposite from a selfish standpoint. Do you think my business would do better or worse if we were really good? Like it's a no brainer. But Will Muschamp has shown me nothing in his coaching tenure to think he's going to be anything more than the guy he's been his entire career, his entire life. So, I don't know. If you have any reasons to believe in Muschamp, I'd love to hear them. Like I said, the only thing that I think you could say I believe in is that you believe that Mike Bobo is going to all of a sudden be the right OC, and maybe he really just did miss on that many OC hires. But it's hard for me to even believe in that, to be honest with you. Um, let's see. The P, the, let's see, the Family Man 06. How is UT pulling off this amazing recruiting class so far? It is crazy. It, it's, it's crazy. It's interesting. I mean, I, I guess, you know, <clears throat> don't underestimate Jeremy Pruitt on the recruiting trail for one. Tennessee can sell tradition, even though all of these kids, none of these kids were alive when Tennessee football was good. Um, I, I don't know, man. I, I mean, <laughs> The bag man? Like, I don't – I mean, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. It's crazy. Whatever they're selling, though, kids are buying. Kids are certainly buying. Um, Let's see. Romus Tush? I, I don't know. What part does DeCarion Joyner play for our program in the future? I mean, I think he's going to be a wide receiver. I don't know how much he's going to play. You know, I'd still kind of like to see him get in there in some sort of a wildcat quarterback situation. But, you know, as far as I know, he's going to be a wide receiver. Does he play a lot? Does he step up? Can he break the, you know, the rotation? 
the three or four receiver rotation? Because right now I think it's Shai Smith, Josh Van, Xavier Leggett, um, Ortre is somewhere in there. You know, then you got all these freshmen. Can Dak Joyner realistically break the rotation? Can he get in there? Um, I think that'll be interesting to see. So it's really tough to say like what place that he holds in our program. You know what I'm saying? It's very, very tough to say right now, but he's a guy that has a lot of athleticism and he's got a lot of talent. He's a, he's a, he's a God given, you know, he's, he's, he's a gifted athlete. So I'd love to see him get, get the ball in his hands and see what he can do. Um, here's a very interesting question. Nick Carnucci, next South Carolina quarterback to beat Clemson. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing, and I've talked about this before. 2021, so not this year, but next season, that's going to be your best chance to beat them in a while. You're going to have either a veteran Holinsky or you're going to have a Luke Doty that has stolen the starting job and he's going to be a sophomore or whatever. So you're going to have experience at quarterback. You're going to have a a sophomore Marshawn Lloyd. You know, the only thing I'm scared of is at that point who the hell is going to be catching the football because you're not even going to have Shai Smith next year. but you know, you, you think about all the pieces you're going to have, and you think about all the guys that Clemson will lose. There'll be no ETN. There'll be no Trevor Lawrence. I know they've got that big-time commit the bi- or the big-time signee who's on campus, DJ, whatever his last name is. <clears throat> but you'll have him at home. So 2021 will probably be your best chance to beat them for a while. If you don't beat them next year, I mean, I don't want to be negative in that situation. I just – I don't even know if the guy – I don't know if the next quarterback to beat Clemson is on the roster. I'd like to say Luke Doty, um, but I don't know. I mean, it's just so tough to say, man. I mean, because honestly, when you're assessing it honestly, South Carolina is just light years away from where Clemson is. So, I mean, for South Carolina to beat Clemson, South Carolina is going to have to get a lot better, period. They're just They're going to have to. So, South Carolina needs to make it a close game before I can tell you what quarterback's going to beat Clemson. You know what I'm saying? Um, Chan underscore Bryant underscore. Ten and two record for football this year. I love your optimism. That's all I'll say. (laughs) I love the optimism. Um, Rylon underscore nine. Top five most impactful players on offense and defense this year. So, that could literally take up an entire show. So, I'm not going to do top five. But my top impact guys in offensive defense, just one guy from both sides, Marshawn Lloyd on offense. And hmm, Zach Pickens on defense, Zach Pickens. Um, Here's an interesting question, not Gamecock related. RK underscore Ocho, who has the best album out so far this year? Very good. That's a tough question to answer, too. Um, the Baby's album was dope. I'm a Nav guy. I like Nav. I thought his album was fire. Um, I'm just trying to think of all the albums that dropped. Oh, Drake's album. I mean, pfft. Drake's album was fire. Let's go with Drake's album. Drake, everything Drake touches is, is Fuego. So, uh, Colby underscore par zero zero. Tennessee, the next big problem for South Carolina, question mark. Yeah, I mean, as a Gamecock fan, you have to hate what's going on in Knoxville. You do, because I was talking to a buddy about this earlier earlier tonight, actually. Um, you know, you're already dealing with Clemson and Georgia. Florida looks like they're getting back. The last thing that South Carolina needs is Tennessee to get good again. It's the last thing they need. So, you know, I mean, I, listen, the talent's got to get there. they got to coach it up. they got to do it on the field. I mean, we saw what Butch Jones did with, with – I mean, he had a ton of talent, and they still didn't win. So, you know, we see what Muschamp does. Brings in talent, and I don't feel like gets the most out of it, but whatever – but, I mean, yeah, it's, it's you know, I, I mean, they could be a problem. I mean, that's a big game this year. That's, a, you know, we'll talk about it more, obviously, when we get to Tennessee. But that's a huge game this year for South Carolina. Tennessee at home, you know, you lost to them last year, okay. But if you lose a second in a row to them, I think you really start to feel like the tide is shifting back to the SEC East being a three-team race and South Carolina not being one of those three teams. So. We'll see, though. We'll see. Thomas underscore Brady underscore H. Last question here. Miami tanked for Tua. I'm down to tank for Urban Meyer at USC, LOL. It's funny because you're not the first person to say that to me about Urban Meyer. Honestly, the the administration would never go for it. 
they would never have the gut to make that controversial of a hire? Because obviously, I mean, listen, his his past is very, you know, very checkered past. I, for one, I would love it because he's a damn good – I mean, he's one of the best head coaches to ever do it, you know? One of the best head coaches to ever do it. He would bring excitement to the program. Um, there'd be a lot of attention on the program. I'd love it. I don't think it'll ever happen because the administration is not – does not have the guts to make that type of hire. I think we're, I think we're too conservative. I think we're too worried about public opinion. So, <clears throat> you know, I, I don't, I don't see it happening, but I, you know, I mean, I love the, I love the suggestion. I, I really do love the suggestion. So cheers to Urban Meyer, be the next head coach of South Carolina. <laughs> so anyways, appreciate the listener questions, guys. That's going to do it all for me. Really do appreciate it. Again, this was a lot of fun and I'm just so excited to have the daily pods back to be talking football you guys have been phenomenal throughout the quarantine and everything. I appreciate the support. And, uh, yeah, man, I'm just – I'm really, really fired up. So, again, appreciate you guys tuning in. That's going to do it all for me. As always, I am Chris Phillips, the Spurs Up Show, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks so much.